We're running a little bit late, so let's get started. We're, 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 we're caught right back up, aren't we? But no, we're, you know, we're on God's time. We're not on our time. We're on God's time. We're here to, to worship Him in spirit and truth this morning. So thankful for last evening's service. So thankful for the, for the entire day that we had together yesterday with the, the spaghetti dinner that, that Richard and Sherry fixed for everybody and, and then to come over here and got some spiritual food. What a, what a great day it was. Uh, there might be some people that's a little bit tired in body this morning, but you know we come here to get refreshed this morning Amen. through through the Holy Spirit. And I, I'm sure that uh, if we do what God tells us to do on this, His day, that we'll certainly end up that way. Brother Roy, ask God's blessing on this morning's service for you, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, one more time for being here today on this morning, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings of the business of God, God. We, Lord, we realize that, God, we just get to see and we pray that, God, you come down that 103 Broadway Street. That, God, bless your family, Brian, their testimonies, Lord. God, that this is all about a word, Father, that go out to demonstrate the spirit and the power of the Almighty God. We just invite your presence, Lord, in all our ways, Father. In your name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 We as a church want to wish two special ladies in the church a very happy birthday coming this week. Miss Mary Ann's going to celebrate one tomorrow. And a very special lady to me, my lovely wife, will have a birthday on Wednesday. Amen. Happy birthday, ladies, Amen. from the church. Amen. We're cer certainly thankful. We're going to see. What? She don't want me to sing to her. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. In the way of announcements this morning, on March the 1st, on Sunday evening, Wade Spencer will be here to minister to us in song. Be much in prayer for that upcoming service. If uh, you ever heard Brother Wade sing, he can certainly sing. Brings the, brings the word to us uh, through God's uh, songs this, that evening. And invite your family and friends to come be with us on that uh, Sunday evening, March the 1st. The next ladies' meeting will be March the 12th over in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, ladies uh, get together, and I guess they have some fun and learn learn more about Jesus, and that's that's the best thought, part about it. On our next Saturday night revival, which is going to be a month, month away, on March the 21st at 6 o'clock, Brother Kyle Carter will be here preaching for us, and I believe Brother George last time will be singing for us that night. He don't, he don't know it yet, but uh, <laughs> I think he will be. No, I don't know who's going to be the special singer that night, but we'll come up with somebody. We'll be much in prayer for that that service on uh, March the 21st. And also, if uh, somebody needs a way to church, we can certainly get them here in, in the van, van setting outside. There's a number there in, in the bulletin. If you know someone that needs some way to church, let us know, and we'll certainly come and get them, okay? Any other announcements before we start this morning? We got a new PA system installed the other evening. Brother Rich was over here several hours, him and his friends putting this new PA system in. Still trying to fine-tune it a little bit. It's got some bugs in it. Uh, if you got any bug spray at home, bring it, and we'll spray it on this PA system and, and get rid of these bugs. But no, we're we're trying to update the uh, church a little bit, make it, make it better for you to hear what's going on. Let's get our hymnal out this morning. Turn to page 176. 176.
settled settled long ago. I don't care how much money you might have physically in your hands today or you can get. You can't buy salvation, folks. I don't care if, if, if these people with these two and three million dollar homes think they can sell them and buy salvation. It ain't going to happen. Our precious Savior bought your salvation with his precious blood. Amen. How, can, go ahead, brother. You know, brother Charlie, I, that song reminds me of Amen. Bless you, long ago. Amen. Uh, I can remember the place. I can remember getting down on the knees. And I can remember giving it to the Lord. Yes. There's one thing the devil can't take away from you as long as you got a memory. Amen. Amen. And that time when you were born again, when you met Jesus Christ. A lot of people say that's when I found him lost. He wasn't lost. Yes. I was. Amen. Yes. Uh, Amen. I'm so glad. Amen. He came into my life and, and made a difference. I've not been perfect and never will be if I go on the other side. But I thank him that he's there for me anytime I need him. Sure. Anytime I need help or anytime that the world lets me down, he never does. Yes. Amen. I love him for what he does for me. And I can just remember, I guess. Bring back to that memory that morning, two o'clock in the morning, getting down, and just barely getting up. <laughs> the bedroom we had wasn't big enough. You had to crawl over the end of the bed to get into bed. And we only had a little space on each side, and there's just enough room just to get down then. And I wiped my rope and stepped in the door. Amen. Uh, Amen. I, I'm, I love him this morning. Amen. He does so much for me that I'm not worthy of. Mm-hmm. I'm just glad I don't get what I deserve. Amen. Amen. But that he gives me that love and forgiveness that he so mercifully gives. Amen. 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 You know, that's what I certainly like about this church. I love this church. I love you people. And I want you to mind the Lord, just like Brother Ron. He could sit there on that testimony all morning and not say anything. But how many? How much would you got beaten today, Brother Ron? Big time. It, it, you know. We, we need to mind the Lord when Amen. we come to his house. Don't be afraid of saying something like hallelujah or praise Amen. the Lord or Amen. glory, 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 because this is God's house. Amen. The world needs to know who we are and what we are when we're in his house and outside also. So let's Amen. remind the Lord this morning, and as we sing page 359, 359 for the next selection. Amen. Amen. <laughs> What a fellowship
church says, Old Satan said, My Lord was gone. Is your Lord, Lord. Is your Lord gone this morning? I don't think so. I think he's right here in our presence this morning. I say praise the Lord to that this morning. You know, he's He's everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're at, on, on the job, Brother Mike, or, or at school, wherever you might be, our Heavenly Father is with you there all the day. Let's all stand across the congregation as they play for us this morning and fellowship with one another, and we'll have our choir come and sing for us this morning.
one day closer today than it was yesterday. And you may be, you really don't know how close we are. Because the Lord could come back just like that to take his church home. I pray that everybody in the sanctuary this morning is ready to go. But if you're not, you certainly can be. I know I've said that several times, but I really mean that. I mean that, that we've got an outstanding preacher here that preaches the word, God's word this morning Amen. to us. And if you uh, have never received our Heavenly Father, today could be the day of salvation for you. Someone with a testimony this morning. Brother Bob's testimony for us this morning. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I'm kind of like uh, Brother Ron there. I remember the day I got saved. Yeah. Yes, sir. I went to work that morning. I had nothing on my mind except for a lot of burden. Yes. And never had thought even about Jesus for a minute in my life. But, you know, I'd been there for probably two hours. And I went over to wash my streets off my hands. And I got over to that place. And there's just something come down over me like I don't know, never felt before. Amen. Life. And I knew right then, because it, it just come to my mind what I had to do. Amen. And I just said, Lord, I know what I got to do. And I accept you as my Savior. I believe everything that the Bible told me that you are. Amen. But I said, I got to have somebody to talk to. And you know, my divorce turned around, walked over to the desk. And he'd walk Brad off cry. And Brad off cry was the pastor out there. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, Brad, I just got right with the Lord. He said, You know, he said, I knew somebody was under prediction when I walked past this rock at the work. Mm -hmm. so he said, I thought it was Lander Brother. Mm -hmm. I said, No, it was me. Hey, Amen. And, and you know, uh, I, I went to church and it was on a Wednesday night. And uh, I, I, I felt like I had to make an open confession. Just like what the Bible says, mm -hmm. and I went to the altar that night and re redone what I had done Amen. that morning. And, and you know, I've never lost that desire to go to church. From that time till now, I still never lost that Amen. desire. Amen. Amen. So I, I'm thankful this morning he come into my life. Amen. 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 Thank you. I love him. Bless you, brother. Amen. Bless your heart. Someone else this morning. Someone else. Bless you, Della. Amen. Amen. Someone else this morning. <coughs> Anyone else? Well, I am glad to be here today. I ain't got too much to say. I know I love the Lord. And I know he loves me. Amen. Amen. Last night we were you know, singers uh, we sang a lot about going to hell. And people going to hell. And so and I wonder if Preachers know, and so they do, you know, they do funerals. A lot of people are going to go to hell. A lot, they think everybody's going to go to hell. Yeah. But that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Ken, we preached last, or taught a thing last night about there's only one way to get to hell, and mm -hmm. that's through Jesus Christ. That's Amen. Right. And uh, that Amen. man's your personal Savior. And that's right. we're going to be fooled. A lot of people are going to be fooled. There are lots of people called, but few chosen. And uh, people's got to realize their heart's got to be right with mm -hmm. God. It's not on your mothers or your parents or mm -hmm. anybody like that That's right. that they can get to heaven on. That's right. It's through the blood of Jesus Amen. and believing on Him. And if I had one thing to say today, I would say make sure your heart is right with God. Amen. I believe the Archangel this morning was well with my soul. Praise God for that. If Amen. they really enter into their hearts, that's where it's yeah. right. Amen. Bless you, brother. Bless your heart. Someone else this morning. Someone else. Bless you, Ella.
Bless your heart, Jesse. Bless your heart. Someone else this morning. Before I forget it, we need to lift Sister Marilyn Burns up in our prayers this morning also. Sister Marilyn went home last evening sick, and she's very sick this morning. So we, as you pray down through the day, remember Sister Marilyn this morning as we pray. I'm going to ask our ushers to come this morning. Brother Ron and Brother Ron, if you want to come this morning and lift our morning offering for us, we certainly appreciate that. Brother Ron Jr., ask God's blessing this morning on this offering. Heavenly Father, Lord, always we are grateful and appreciative, Lord, for the chance to be here in your home. I ask, Lord, to remember those who can give and those who cannot. God, I ask, Lord, just to bless, Lord, to you for the uplifting of your kingdom, for the upkeep of this home, this building. Lord, I ask you just to watch over each and every one of us. Remember this. We are loved this prayer, this uh, meeting this morning, God. Just be with us. Teach us. Commune with us, Lord, and draw us closer to you. Amen. 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 What a beautiful song. He touched me and made me whole. Well, you thought you might have been whole before God touched you. You was a person. You was walking around in, in your skin and doing the things that's, that you normally do. But when God touched you, yeah. he changed you, didn't Amen. he? Yeah. He better change you anyhow. That's because right. if he didn't change you, I think you might still need a little touch from our <laughs> Heavenly Father. Who's going to sing for us, Jan? You might be, and I think Regina's going to sing for us also this morning, and he, if you've come this way with a song, certainly don't take it back home with you this morning. Offer it to God this first and our, the congregation after that. As far as I know, he never went to church in his life. And um, so his funeral is tomorrow morning. And um, so just remember the family. I don't know him really well. I, I did meet the brother the other day. And um, just keep that family in your prayers. Amen.
the bloodline. Sometimes our battles get hot, and it seems we're fighting a lot. Oh, I remember I'm standing on the rock. Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and give up to cause I bound to lose I just gotta tell you Satan you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood you may stare and you may fight but you're gonna lose this battle tonight cause remember Beneath the flood and got saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested and tasted your grace. I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hope. The love of God gave me his power. The love of God won't let me stay the same. The love of God calls me up higher. His will is stronger, that's why I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy. 
see of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. All right, yeah. Someone else this morning. Someone else with the song this morning. Who else this morning is going to sing for us? Regina's finally going to come up and sing for us. Be much in prayer for us. She comes this morning to minister to us. She said she didn't have her songbook, but she sent. Bob out to get it, so Bob went out to get it, so you got to use that song book this morning. <laughs> I'm glad to be here this morning, and you know, I I can't sing. I try. And George and him tries to find me on the guitar, but Mom says she can never find me either, so. 
I guess I just have my own tune and my own tone when it comes to singing, but you know, at least I am singing for the Lord. Amen. This is an old song that my mom and dad used to sing all the time when we was in church, if I can get through it. We often judge a man by the clothes that he wears or the car he's riding in. You can often tell if he's doing very well by the house he's living in. Well, I am here to say it don't work that way for everybody I know. I just got acquainted with some poor rich folk a little while ago. Well, I'm a poor rich man. I'm a poor rich man. Oh, you can see it really happened to me. I'm a millionaire. I know that I am poor, but I got a lot more than many rich folk that I know. I got a home in the sky that money can't buy, for I'm a poor rich man. Now when a man is rich with his worldly goods, he often has a lot of friends. They all want to try to live so high when they know that it's a sin. Well, even if I could, I don't believe that I would want the riches of this old world. When it's my time to glow, I'll be glad to know that I'm a poor rich man. Well, I'm a poor rich man. I'm a poor rich man. Oh, you can see it really happened to me. I'm a millionaire. I know that I am poor, but I got a lot more than many rich folk that I know. I got a home in the sky that money can't buy, for I'm a poor rich man. Someone else this morning. Someone else. My sister Angie's coming. Be much in prayer for her as she uh, comes to minister to us this morning in song. Can you turn this on? Okay. <clears throat> you know, this has been the week that um, we've all thought about love, you know, and I can't think of love without thinking of my Jesus and how much he loves us you know there's a few people in this world that i'd actually die for but he died for all of us and uh, loves us all that much and this song has been on my heart all weekend so y'all just gonna have to suffer through <coughs> <coughs> on a hill called calvary jesus my lord suffered for me he carried the cross all the way, my sins to atone. Then they nailed him to the cross. Great was the pain and the loss. He suffered it all. Because he loved me, because he loved me, my Savior died. On the cross was crucified. No greater love of mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name, he loved me so. Now I am his, he's mine, I know. He suffered it all, because he loved me. 
because he loved me. Then they carried him away, placed him in a lonely grave. Surely they thought that this would be the end of this man. But on that third and glorious day, God rolled the stone away. He rose from the dead because he loved me. Because he loved me, my Savior died. On the cross was crucified. No greater love of mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name, he loved me so. Now I am his, he's mine, I know. He suffered it all because he loved me. He suffered it all because he loved me. I love him this morning. I was waiting to see what Sister Loretta was going to do, where she'd go play or sing or whatever, but she said no. Someone else this morning. Someone else. If no others, here's our pastor, Brother George, this morning. If the kids are going down, they can go. Okay, thank you. I'm going down. You can go too. <laughs> What do you think, Rich? Good enough, huh? <laughs> we did have a good spaghetti dinner. If you like spaghetti, you know what makes good spaghetti? Meatballs. Matter of fact, I don't even need spaghetti. I just eat the meatball. I like meatballs. <laughs> Did have a good dinner, had a good time, played some fun games. <laughs> yeah, found out that Teresa doesn't know me very well. <laughs> yeah, Twinkies were pretty good. What time was it this morning? Hmm, I don't know, one or two o'clock this morning. I sleepwalk, really. Got the same path, same pattern. Walk right in, walk right into the kitchen. Well, we better get off of that. We found out John can play the cup game pretty good. Yeah, yeah he's the champ, yeah. We had a good time last night, but it's good to be here last night. Yesterday, that's over, and uh, let's look ahead, huh? Chapter 4 of the book of John. Chapter 4 of the book of John. When I say that, if you've read your Bible much, you heard much preaching already. You know probably where we're going. There's a danger in that because um, just like sleepwalking to the kitchen, you learn your pattern. Well, if you're not careful, you uh, get to reading the Word of God and you think, okay, I, I understand this, I got this, and maybe it is not as impactful on you uh, as it should be. But I pray that you would uh, give heed to it this morning and uh, let's... Apply it to our lives. Chapter 4 of John. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. 
Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into life everlasting. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. Which I call, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And then they went out of the city and came unto him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the day you've given us. God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before these folks and try to deliver this message. God, I pray that you would bless us, Lord, that you would help us to find ourselves here uh, in this text, Lord, and to find what it is that you have for our lives today, this morning, as we sit here in this congregation. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And God, I pray that you will do your work now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so can you imagine... Do you find many more places in the Word of God where Jesus just has a conversation? Yeah. Here he is just having a conversation with someone. Um, it has been said, who was it? Uh, Della, maybe. I'm not worthy and I will never be worthy. Someone else made the statement that they are not uh, worthy and they are not perfect and they will never be worthy. What do lost people usually think? Now a lot of times they will look at the church and the church will look at someone who doesn't go to church, right? That's how we terminology, our terminology is. They just don't go to church. I guess um, there was a time where that really meant going to church meant you were a Christian. I guess. I'm only 52 years old, so maybe you could tell me if you've lived longer than that. I don't know for sure, but I take it that going to church 
meant that you were a Christian. And now we look and see that even there are people that go to church that maybe their hearts aren't right with God. So it's more than just about going to church. So when we uh, ask this, do you go to church anywhere? Somebody could say yes and still be dead set bound for hell. Because going to church doesn't save us. That is not what makes us right with God. As Charlie said, it takes the blood of Christ. That is what makes us right with God. And his blood was shed. Does that mean you're automatically saved because Jesus died on the cross? No, you have to accept that. You have to repent. You have to come to him. He already made his choice, and God already made his choice when he sent his only begotten son. And so now you have to decide. God gives you the opportunity and the ability and how gracious of our Heavenly Father to even give us that opportunity, that offering, if you will, here is a sacrifice that was made for you. He will redeem you if you will, but there are multitudes of people who won't. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is an authority figure. Amen. God is an authority figure. Amen. I, uh, m My whole life, I always had a problem with authority figures. Now, you could knock me for that, or you could say, yes, I've been in the same situation, and, and I probably couldn't help my personality and how I came into this world, but I can tell you that after a while, you can change. Now you, because when you become a Christian, God will help you to understand if you can't take orders from one person, you will never be a leader yourself, period. And it's not that people uh, uh, maybe aspire to be leaders, but if you can't take orders from God, if you can't take a command from God, if you can't follow the direction that God has to give, then it's going to be hard for you to direct other people to follow him as well. Uh, if you look at him as some tyrant who only wants to get his agenda across. Here is, is Jesus. He didn't say to her right off the bat. Uh, he didn't say anything about, do you attend synagogue? You know, like we, what church do you go to? Jesus didn't say, are you Baptist? <laughs> he didn't say, are you Methodist? He didn't say, do you attend the synagogue? Jesus didn't have to. Jesus knew who she was and he knew why she was there. And the scripture says, and isn't it perfect timing that here uh, these folks are arguing about who was baptized by Jesus and who was baptized by John and who baptized more. And Jesus says, man, I got to get out of here. And the next thing you find him sitting at Jacob's well, he's wearied from his journey. And sometimes being wearied from the journey isn't so much physical as it is mental. And I'm sure dealing with these fellows arguing about who baptized more probably gave him a little bit of a headache. So here he is. He's like, you guys go get the food. I'll be all right. Just go. And he sent him away. Why is that? I'll tell you what. Some of the best times to be with a patient when I go into a home is when the caregiver, the wife, the husband, the, the children, whoever just goes. Just go somewhere else and allow one-on-one -on -one time because it allows the person to open up. You think that woman would have opened up with those disciples being there? No, probably not because she would have been afraid that they were going to pass judgment on her. She knew that Jesus didn't know her, and she knew she didn't know Jesus, but there was something about Jesus that just calmed her to the point where she just spilled her guts. <laughs> and the Lord has a way of sending people to us. If he doesn't appear to you himself as he did to uh, Saul or Paul on the road to Damascus, then he has a way of sending someone to you to help you open up a little bit and to discuss some things. And what he does here as he begins to talk, he's sitting here on this well. This woman comes. She didn't come to visit with a Jewish man. She came to get water. What's that? Everyday life. Bob said he was going that morning. He didn't have a thought on his mind about getting saved. Come midday, he met Jesus at the well. <laughs> and what was Bob doing at the well? He's just trying to wash his hands. That's all Bob was trying to get the grease off his hands. But Jesus met him there and began to deal with him. Here, Jesus meets this woman. So what's the first thing? Who makes the first move? Jesus says, give me to drink. He starts the conversation. 
I think he always starts the conversation. I think if you will be dealt with by God, no man can come unto the Father except for the Spirit draw him. So if you will be dealt with, it will be Jesus who reaches out to you. Some churches would teach different things, some denominations, some doctrine is a little uh, different on that or a different interpretation of the doctrine. And some people believe that there's only these certain, but uh, if you look at the scripture and you see the word of God that, that is, whosoever will, let him come unto me, all ye that labor um, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But I believe Jesus will be the one to reach out. Amen. So he reached out to her. He said, give me to drink. She said, why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan, and you're a Jew. And you know, we don't have any dealings. I I don't understand why you're talking to me. Jesus said, if you knew who it was that you were talking to, you would ask him to give you a drink, (laughs) and he would have given you living water. I think sometimes we, if we're not careful, get too far removed from our salvation experience, and we forget what it was like. It's already been repeated this morning of some folks kneeling down by their bedside, praying uh, at their place of business and going back to a church and praying that night with an open confession or on a Wednesday night with open confession. Sometimes I think it is that if we're not careful, we get too far away from our experience that we had. It, it, you're not saved just by that experience, but it is nice to be able to remember the birth that took place when the Lord came into your heart. And I can tell you one main reason that it's nice to be able to remember that because if you don't know when that happened, Satan will fight you with that till the day you die. Somebody said to me here a while back something about that. And I said, look, if you can't remember, if you're not sure, what are you waiting for? Get right now. Just pray now and say, Lord, forgive me. I don't have to remember the time. I don't have to remember the place. I just have to know that he did it. When I go in and sing to Alzheimer's or dementia patients, and I'm telling you what, there's a little woman the other day, and she was in Ironton, and she had a, 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 a bed sheet in her jerry chair as she was leaned back, and they were all listening to me sing, and I was watching around, looking around, and she's leaned back, and she's got this uh, bed sheet, and she's looking like she's stitching or crocheting, and she keeps doing something, and she'll look around, and she'll smile every once in a while, but she never stopped singing until I stopped and when I would sing the song she would never stop and then when she did stop because I stopped they did what our doctor calls word salad she could speak but it was words here and there and it was just tossed and mixed but when you start singing the old rugged cross or uh, Jesus loves me you could see her doing that (laughs) and that's great to me I think that's great here's Jesus comes and He's getting ready to share an experience with this woman that she will never forget. But she's got to know who he is first. She's got to know. People have to hear. It's important that we go out and tell people that they need the Lord. And we can tell them about everything else. We like the Cincinnati Reds. I was a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan all of my life from the time I was a kid and they were winning Super Bowls all of my life. Been to Pittsburgh probably four or five times. I mean, had jerseys, got a big ring, had all all that jazz until the stupidity was, <laughs> well, I happened uh, while, I mean, being in Myrtle Beach, went out and took the tag off the front of my car and said Pittsburgh Steelers, took it in, put a C.F. Martin guitar tag on the front of my car and Teresa said, you're really not going to watch it anymore, but the Cincinnati Reds, the sports, we can talk about all kinds of things, can't we? We can meet someone out there. We can talk about our high schools. We can talk about our kids, our grandkids, our guitars, our, our guns, whatever it is we want to talk about. Why is it so hard for people to talk about the Lord? Is it because it hasn't impacted you the way it does this woman in this text? Because at the end of this, man, she goes out. She doesn't tell them, man, you got to come down here. This water's really good. But she goes out and tells them, come see a man that's told me everything I've ever done. Is not this the Christ? And you can say all you want to that you're just not that person that talks to people openly. You talk to someone and if you do not, you have a perfect opportunity nowadays to do it on social media. Who cares about 
People get on there and share all this stupidity and, excuse me, but all this stupidity about politics and all this junk. I mean, can't we share stuff about the love of God? Yeah, yeah well, anyhow, this would be the time when some other preacher would say, better move on, I'll get in trouble. I could say probably I stay in trouble, so it is what it is. The woman said unto him, Sir, this well's deep and you don't have anything to draw with. Nothing. How can you give me? And I don't know about you, but this is, this is kind of, uh, t- to use this phrase, mind-blowing. This is Jesus. I mean, <laughs> this is no nail-scarred hands, no nail-scarred feet, no pierced side Jesus, no crown of thorns Jesus yet. This is the miracle-working man yeah. sitting, talking with a woman. And why we're told, and she tells us that she's had five husbands and the one she has now is not her. Why we're told that is to show that, yes, in their day, and yes, things are a little different in our day today, but in their time, That person was an outcast. And what this shows is Jesus comes right where he knows she's going to be. Here she comes. And he's watching. He's probably like, she'll be here any minute. (laughs) Yes, Peter. Yes, John. Go get fish. Just go. (laughs) Here she comes. And he starts talking to her. Why? Because he cares for her. If it would, let me ask you this. Do you think if it would have been the disciples, they would have started talking to her? Yeah. What an indictment against the church. Yeah. Because they were the church. Yeah. They were the followers of Christ. And if they would have been the ones to say, and that's why probably Jesus sent them, let me send you on a task. Go get you a, a fish. Go get you a piece of bread. Go get us something to eat. So he sends them away. And when, notice when they come back, they say, you need to eat. He says, I'm not hungry. I got something to eat of that you have no clue about. And he's talking to the church. But what would they have done? They would have looked and said, "Mm," they'd have tiptoed around that woman. (laughs) They'd have probably dipped their bucket down and tried to move the water out of the way so they wouldn't get dirty water because her dirty bucket touched it. That's a shame, but isn't that how we are sometimes? But man, God help us if if we are that way. My prayer is that we won't be. But I said today when I started to pray, God, help us all to find a piece of us in this text. And if that's you, I pray that you get rid of that. And you can think anything you want to about alcoholics and drug addicts and homeless people and all this stuff. And you can can look at that and you can say, well, we need to do something to help them. And maybe you're the person that will do something. I understand that not everybody has the same capability or the ability to, Uh, to do or the opportunity to do for everybody can you imagine if everybody in the church focused on one thing it's important to you it should be important but if everybody focused on that one thing look at all the other things that would get left out so it's good that we are a body of believers and that we can focus on different things but if you're that person that looks at someone who the world would consider to be an outcast, let me tell you today, this is not a news flash, but you were an outcast. Amen. And Jesus came and was sitting before you ever got there. He knew that you needed him. If you come into this building this morning and you do not have a relationship with Christ, he's probably saying, hear ye, hear ye. It's time to start. Let's get this ball rolling. This person needs to be saved. So what happens? He begins to speak to her. She spills the beans. He says, go call your husband. He didn't have to say that, did he? Wonder why he said that. Because he wanted her to admit it. He wanted her. We confess when we come to the Lord. He wasn't saying going out and tell the rest of the world what you've done. But he wanted to. Bring it out of her. What do you do when you come to the altar? I remember Herschel Stiegel years ago. He said he got saved in a little church. And I've been in the church that he got saved in. And I'm telling you, it was little. I mean, it was little, little. It was, and as he's there at the altar, he'd not been in church before. 
Somebody said, you need to go to the altar and confess all your sins. So he's up there and he starts telling about people that he stole from in a little church. And and some of those people are sitting in that church. And the pastor said, son, you might not want to say everything out loud. (laughs) But he was confessing. And that's what this woman is doing. She is confessing. And Jesus says to her, you said right, you don't have a husband now, or you don't have, uh, you've had five, and the one you got now isn't yours, and you've said that right. And then he begins to give her a history lesson between the Jews and their belief and their doctrine. Then he tells her about God being a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth, and that is the way that they would worship him. But then she says, I'm getting ready to close with this, she says, Verse 25, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. This messianic hope was for the Jewish people, but also these half-breed Samaritans. Somewhere it trickled down to them as well, and their family still told them there is a Messiah coming. This government of these, of these uh, Jewish people, this whole area is under Roman restriction. It's under Roman regulation at this time. And this Messiah was going to be, uh, they pictured him as coming in, riding in on a white horse. He was going to be king. He was going to be conqueror. He was going to be deliverer. And she said, we know, I know that Messiah is coming. Her words, I know. That Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak to thee am he. Can you imagine, Ron? He could have said, look me in the eyes. It's me. I am the Messiah. She could have said, get out of here. She could have said, oh, yeah, right. But because of the conversation she had had up until this point, (laughs) I think something sunk in. And see, when it is the Spirit of God that is dealing with you, it's more than just your problems and your trials and your troubles. Because when people have problems and trials and troubles and they come to church, Then they want to automatically say, well, really, I'm not under conviction. It's just like I have a bad feeling because of whatever happens. And we could throw a string of things out there that someone goes through. We could say, well, they were just feeling bad because of this. But when it's the Lord dealing with you, you know it. And you know how I know you know it? Not only has he dealt with me, but he makes sure you know it. Because he's not going to say to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, if he's never given you the chance. And so if you're here today and you do not have a relationship with Christ, what he's doing this morning for you, he's saying, look into my eyes. He's given you the chance this morning to make things right with him. That's your decision to make. <laughs> she made the right one, didn't she? She left her water pot. There were more important things than just getting water that she'd grow thirsty again over, but she left the water pot and went out to tell others. The board says 55 people this morning. Do we count babies? 55 people, babies and all. Are they halves? No. (laughs) 55 people. Somebody could say, and they're all saved in here, George. Do you know that for sure? (laughs) 55 people, and they're all in church this morning. We do know that. We can look around and say, yep, they're all here this morning. Are they all right with God this morning? He knows, doesn't he? He came here for you. He was here before you got here. (laughs) He's waiting on you. This is an opportunity for you. If you need 
a relationship with Christ. Amen. Right here is a good place. Amen. Let me tell you this story. There's a guy who came to listen to me preach. Not because I was a good preacher, but he knew me. And so he's going to come and listen. And he comes and he stands in the back of this church crying. And I'm thinking, and this is like fishing in a nice water hole where you can just reel him in. You know, I've got, he's on the line fishing for men. I got him. He's like, he's going to, and I'm standing up there giving the invitation. I see him back there squalling and the guy next to him. And I mean, these are men, construction men, you know, and the guy next to him's standing there crying. I'm thinking, man, they're both going to come. Neither one of them came. And they left. And the following week, that was at a visiting church I was preaching in. The following week, the guy came to the church I pastored. And he came and he sat on the back row. And I said, hey, it's nice to have you, you know. And he's back there preaching. I see he moves. And I said, we're going to have a revival. And he comes. And he comes like three or four nights of that revival. When I'm getting ready to leave one night, he said, George, let me ask you something. He said, he said when I first came and listened to you preach, he said, I felt as if God was speaking to me. He said, I felt as if he was drawing me. I could have went and prayed. And I said, why didn't you? He said, I don't know. And he said, but I, I haven't felt that way of the last couple of services. He said, and what I'm asking is that you would pray that God would and I said, well, let me ask you this. If he would have dealt with you tonight like that, would you have come? He said, I can't honestly answer that. I don't know. I said, okay, well, that's an honest answer. I said, you know, when you sit in the back, and this is for all you back sitters. I said, when you sit in the back, I said, you see everything that happens. I said, as a pastor, I probably received in, in the time that I pastored more complaints or heard more complaints from people that sat in the back of the church because they saw everything going on. This little kid's doing this and that doing that and this person's doing this and you see the people who have respect or no respect. You see the adults who take their chewing gum paper and put a piece of used chewing gum in it, put it in a songbook holder or whatever. You know, you say those things don't happen. Hey, who's the janitor in this church? Does it happen, Angie? It happens. She thumbs up. Yeah, I know. We were janitors once. Those things do happen. Yeah, you see all that stuff. And so I said, what's your problem is? I said, you're sitting in the back. He was sitting right where Ron's sitting. I said, in this revival, I said, you know, you see where I sit right on the front row? I said, here's a good thing. I said, won't you just come up and sit by me? <laughs> and he just kind of, he's like, I don't know if I could do that, George. I said, well, I'm just telling you the truth. If there's 60 or 70 people in this building, you're going to watch everything that happens. And, and God wants you to focus on this. I said, you're asking, you want God to deal with you like he did before? Get yourself clear where you can hear him speak. Amen. Next night, he's on the front row with me. So I'm sitting there. I'm not preaching. Roy Willis is actually preaching, I believe, that night. And so here he is. Roy preaches his heart out. Roy's over here praying. When he's done, he says, all right, George, turn it back over to you. I come to the pulpit. I said, you know, if God is speaking to you tonight, you are close enough, some of you, that all you have to do is just fall forward and you'd be here. <laughs> and you know what he did? <laughs> he knelt right down and prayed. Amen. Is the man still going today? <laughs> Still going today, 15 or more years ago, still going today. A trustee at his church, I mean, one of the greatest, but God knew, since Christ, here this guy comes, hey, what are you doing here? Just like this woman at the well. Jesus is there waiting, here she comes. Well, he's here for you today. Amen. Stand with me, if you will. Connie's going to play us a piece on the piano. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me, if you would, please. Let me be a pastor here for just a minute. You're here today, and you do not have a relationship with Christ. You are not a Christian. By that, I don't mean that you're riding on being taken to church when you was a kid. I'm asking today 
you cannot remember ever asking Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins if you are not in a relationship with Christ can you just lift your hand let me see that so I'll know how to pray for you I mean I've come here for almost a year most of you I figure I probably got a pretty good handle on the situation but is anybody here today George I'm not a Christian please pray for me anyone in this building anyone at all Now the next question I have can probably hit us all right between the eyes. Anybody in here today not just where you'd like to be with the Lord? Not just where you really need to be with the Lord? Maybe just kind of not faking it till you make it, but maybe just nonchalantly. Maybe you got the little things in life that come up against you. Maybe you're disappointed in your church. It's not what you thought it would be. Things aren't going the way you wanted them to go. Things in your family aren't like they should be. Things with your health isn't like it should be. You have things in your life that if you're not careful will discourage you. We hear this often. Some people say you shouldn't hear it among Christians, but it is what it is. We hear of discouragement. We hear of distraction. We hear of depression. Um, maybe you're here today and you have a need and you would like to come and allow us to pray with you. I would ask you to come. Be honest with yourself. If this is your church and this is where you've attended for a while and this is where you plan to attend, this is your church and this is your family, come and let us pray with you. If you won't come and let us pray with you, come and pray with this family. They've got some things going on that they need a lot of help with.